Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I think we are in a bit of delay, so sorry about that. But uh, thank you for coming uh, today. It's been great to be coming out during the last two weeks uh, this workshop that some of you guys have been participating in. Um, today is the final show. We're going to present uh, the projects that some of the groups are, have been developing during the last two weeks. Uh, for those that are joining us today in the first time, don't consider these projects as like, you know, like finished projects. Today is more like, you know, the first public presentation of projects that are ongoing. And hopefully, uh, as we will say at the end of the session, uh, some of them can continue uh, further as a working group with, uh, with Media Lab. So first of all, I want to thanks uh, to all the people that have been, you know, have been joining us during the last two weeks, but also all the people that made this possible. The team from, from Media Lab, team from, from Matadero, and of course, uh, our tutors that have been joining, uh, joining us from here, but also from Hong Kong and Los Angeles. Um, so, uh, the, you know, the people that have been joining us in the last two weeks, you already know them, but for those that don't, doesn't, and for those people that will be watching this uh, through YouTube, uh, I will introduce them. They are Arten Konetskiv, uh, also uh, Alexei Jansitov, uh, N, and also uh, Eli Joteva. They formed the collective current, which are kind of experts in this weird thing that we call volumetric cinema. That hopefully, uh, now some of you guys are already also becoming expert into that regard. So also they are joining today. Um, we we have we are super happy to come with uh, the participation today of some other guests that uh, I want to thank you guys, uh, Maria, Hadin, Deborah. Victor and George, and also it's good to see some of you guys uh, from long time no see. Uh, so, well, I will give you the word to, to Arthur and Jancy, and from there we can move on. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have like a concert there, so it hopefully it doesn't bother so much. Uh, but well, enjoy and thank you so much for joining us. Cool. Maybe I can say a little bit for my of the open house, and then we can go on with the introduction. Yeah, great. Cool. So, um, hi everyone. We're the current team. Uh, please, everyone, remember that this format of the open house review is 15-minute presentation from each group, and it will be followed by a 15-minute discussion from um, the guest panel. So, the overall process should take less than three hours, and then we'll close up with a celebration. So, make sure that we stick strictly to the time. And um, before we introduce the guests and give our very warm welcome, I'm sure that um, our team would love to give our sincere thanks to Matadero Lab, um, especially to Eduardo, Elena, Danny, and Sonia for all of their hard work in order to make this happen. So, yay, clap. And as Eduardo was saying, this workshop was spread across two weekends, and we're already seeing some really amazing output from our talented participants. So, Second of all, I would really like to thank um, all of their hard work, and it's not really e easy to digest current within two weeks. So, clap. Thank you to all the participants. But of course, last but not least, we would like to thank um, our five guests um, who are spending their Saturday night with us, and some of them had to wake up at 7 a.m. for us um, for this review. So um, maybe just two lines to introduce volumetric cinema so that we can better prepare the audience for the, with the contextual information. Um, the workshop basically is at the intersection of three core ideas, digital persona, AI narrative, and environment reconstruction. So we asked the question, in an increasingly digitized age, how can we bring inclusivity into our spatial design, and how can individuals represent themselves in such spaces? So we're trying to highlight the significance between um, environmental sensing and human representations. Yeah, so basically another focus was the collaborative pipeline that we were using. Um, which basically reflects on the constraint of data fragmentation. We call it a collaborative pipeline because it's synthesized between open source and proprietary softwares uh, with the use of neural network as a scalable workflow. So we focus on the logic of data flow from machine learning to computer graphics modeling interfaces, as opposed to imposing a strict technical instruction of what the student should do. And from here, um, Arctameli and Yancy, if you would like to add also to the introduction as well. Uh, yeah, I can uh, all, uh, like... I think uh, you're muted. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, and this, this whole pro uh, um, this whole workshop is uh, about, um, 
about a lot of things, but it's for me it's about how tools affecting how we think and how we can like accelerate or change this paradigm with these tools affecting our brains. Because if you have hammer, you know how to use hammer. But if you um, if, if you have like weird new weird instruments, you don't even know how to apply them. And then your imagination start to uh, to work with that and trying to understand how how you can use this. And so since this instrument is something new, it's something for like forming the future. And this is this workshop is about forming the mindset for the future and how to like operate in this. Uh, disrupted field of uh, these new uh, tools, new elements for shaping the future. Um, yeah. Yeah, and maybe just to add on and to I that. And I hope this I future is, uh, is going to be without any war and all these crazy things that are happening right now. Uh, I'm totally against this. Um, hope you too. <laughs> Artyom? Ellie? Ellie? Um, I just wanted to add on to that that, oh god, I can hear myself, that's very distracting. Um, I just wanted to add on to that that, yeah, it's, it's working with tools to change our way of thinking, but also to shape, to make ourselves step, step outside of our human perspectives. From, so from collaborating with artificial intelligence and the narrative construction to collaborating with volumetric cinema tools to shape narratives in a spatial way instead of a time-based way is one of the one of the ways we're trying to step outside of our human positions in making working with these tools. Actum. Yeah. Uh, like uh, we already said about the tools, the volumetric cinema for me it's also the uh, first offline workshop that we are uh, making so it's also about people and I want to uh, thank again the Media Lab team and uh, our amazing students because I never saw so motivated guys <laughs> and uh, I'm really waiting to see the results because uh, I didn't check anything they up uploaded for today. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Maybe a last point would be that you will probably get a sense of volumetric cinema very differently from the all four of us because that was actually it. Like it's not really virtual reality. It's not really a game. It's not a simulation. It's a very loosely defined concept and we find that very current. So um, through this workshop, we really hope to develop the critical thinking together with the participant over how we can use this medium operational within day-to-day um, -day experience and also within larger scope of design and planning. And with that, um, let us introduce our guest for today. Yes, it's uh, my pleasure um, to welcome and introduce our amazing guest. So in person uh, with you, we have uh, Parade, um, led by Deborah Lopez and Hadin Sharpel. Um, so Parade approaches design from various fields and contexts, addressing topics related to climate change, ecology, human perception, machine sentience, and the capacity for altering current modes of existence. Their practice and pedagogy intermingles with at the Bartlett School of Architecture in Research Cluster 1 entitled Monumental Wastelands, where climate fiction is used as a vehicle for engaging various ecologies and challenging current economically profitable models through imminent fiction. Through research and interdisciplinary techno bashing, projects are narrative driven while varying at scales and mediums, often positioning themselves within a socio-political discourse as a tool for disruption. So welcome guys, so nice to have you in person. Um, thanks for coming out, yay. Um, and then here in Zoom, we have Maria Victor and George. Uh, Maria uh, Kupsova is an artist, researcher, and educator in the fields of transdisciplinary art and architecture who uses synthetic forms of intelligence and biomechanic design techniques in her research and artistic practice. She is a PhD candidate and a research associate at the Synthetic Landscape Lab Institute of Urban Design, University of Innsbruck, as well as a senior lecturer at the ITMO University. Welcome, Maria. <clears throat> and then we have, hi, hey. Then we have Victor, uh, Victor Sardenberg. Hi, is an architect and researcher. Recently, his interests are, are in quantitative aesthetics, mobile robotics, speculative design. He is a PhD candidate at the Leipzig University in Hanover and has studied at, uh, I'm going to butcher this, 
Sadelschut in Frankfurt and <laughs> Valinad Academy in Gothenburg and uh, Matskin Mat University in Sao Paulo. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. Welcome. Yay. And last but not least, we have uh, George uh, Papamateaki, uh, who is a graduate student of environmental design and media at Yale University. He holds an MSc in geography and a diploma in architecture from Athens, Greece. In 2019, he was part of Strelka Think Tank New Normal in Moscow, where we met him. And he is interested in environmental geography, infrastructure space, and SSDS. His research and writings have been published in journals and periodicals, such as Print, Log, Frog, Fog, and Sum, Sum, Sum. Shum, shum. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for joining us uh, to review these amazing projects. Welcome. Um, we're so excited to have you here. The students have worked so hard, and we hope that uh, they blow your mind. Welcome. All right, let's start. And another small addition is that what, what we are going to see today is not like a final project, like everything is set up and uh, crystal clear. It's it's more about like showing this process of interacting with uh, with these new tools, with these neural networks, machines, and so on. So this is is a, is a dialogue between these teams and their tools, uh, and they had crazy short amount of time. And I think they're super great that they have this, you know strength inside them to dive into this ocean. <laughs> Let's uh, applause them. Yeah, so uh, let me introduce the first team who will present uh, their project. Uh, the project name uh, kind of pa uh, pause on sanity. Uh, it's uh, Alvaro, uh, Javier, uh, Levi, Ma Mariana and Raquel. And it's a project uh, that looks at uh, second person point of view in narration and per perception. So, welcome, guys. Good luck. So, uh, g uh, Hi everyone. Hi. So we are team two, and um, he is. Uh, I mean, you are not gonna see everyone <laughs> from like. Okay. Tienes ahí. ¿Cómo se pone? No sé. Control E. Nope. <laughs> okay. I will show the presentation like that. Is it okay? <laughs> ¿Cómo? ¿Dónde se minimiza? Ah, aquí, vale. Okay. Y, vale, esta no, ¿no? Vale. Okay. <coughs> okay. So we are team two, um, and uh, our team it's uh, Alvaro Botter that is here on my right. He is like a, a fashion designer. Javiera, that is like a cinema editor. Uh, Levi, that is an artist. And uh, Mariana, that is a photographer. And me, Raquel Jimeno, that I'm a software engineer. And um, the title of our project, it's the kind of pause on sanity. Um, that it's, uh, we read about an article. We read about an article that um, a security guard was in a museum. And he was every day doing like a mechanical things, every day going to work. And uh, one day, he had the, 
the idea of like paint two, uh, painting two eyes in a faceless painting in the museum. It was like the cost of this painting, you can't <laughs> imagine it was. And um, the person that um, uh, write this uh, article uh, <laughs> said that this person one day had like a kind of possum sanity. <laughs> and this is how like our project, it will start or like the concept could start. <clears throat> so this is uh, one the AI uh, narrative that appear with uh, the database that we introduce into the GTP2 um, AI. And uh, it's part of kind of like our project, like the concept, the main concept. And it's, uh, you have a weird appearance, a weird face, a weird tongue, a weird way of looking at things, a kind of paradoxical aspect, not a person, but a personification. And this is how it starts. And this is kind of um, uh, the beginning of um, this AR narrative and the abstract that we create for the project. And uh, some of the books that we were introducing was, for example, The Metamorphosis of Kafka and The Visible and The Invisible. And yeah, Homo Deus also about talking about the the humanity and like the um, uh, post-humanity, this kind of like transformation. And some of the reference that we took uh, for our project were, for example, the fashion film of Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> and for example, the, the film Run Lola Run, um, the video FK A, Twikes and um, the game Drive, for example. And yeah, about the concept, <laughs> I will read a little bit here. So this project, it's an experiment, experimentation and a narrative in a second person through the mixing of the two video volumetric materials and the third work with an AA. The theme goes about the capacity of metamorphosis of a single, single character, which comes from a multiple possibilities that occurs in a single day. The transformations require a conscience exercise. We treat the concept of a single day as a representation of the entire life. The day was like a resurgence of the light. This like also was our abstract, Comes like some part of it will come in from um, the some sentences that we had with the AI, and um, the thing that we were trying to uh, transmit with the video, it was that um, that a person could experiment experiment with during the whole day experiment with the two states. What? Sorry, I lost <laughs> here. And da, da, da. a spontaneous version of the idea that a person could experiment with a dream the whole day, experimenting with two states, uh, one unconscious, one person, a point of view, that it will be some videos in 2D, uh, that is kind of like when you are, have like a, this state of unconscious mental state, it's like a mechanical, uh, like a threading of doing um, some routine task. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it will be an unconscious state, uh, no, sorry, a conscious state, <laughs> that it will be this kind of third person that um, after thinking about this third person, uh, we transmit, uh, we, how they evolve uh, to like a second person, that it's like the present, the feeling what you are doing every day, introducing a second person narrative <laughs> who interact with the views. Sorry. 
<clears throat> so um, one of the main things that we did with this project was uh, working with the AI. Um, for, for example, here it's with the ETP2. I think that I'm saying it properly. <laughs> Sometimes I kind of dyslexic with these things. Um, and we were uh, having like our database with the books and we were trying to work with some sentences for the AI that could like give us the narrative. And for example, one of these will be, he was there but was not at the same time because, and we were like having some answers from the AI. Um, yeah, we had like a, a lot of them, for example, about the metamorphosis of a human, the understand care as blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, another thing that we were um, working in was the, um, we were working with another um, AI for the interpretation of like a sentence in image. This image uh, were like, also talking about our concept and um, giving some reference. This is like the results that we were like having here. And um, um, this also, these images after that, we, because some uh, colleague here that it was really kind, shared some knowledge about a monster mass <laughs> application. We developed these characters in 3D model models and we introduced them into our uh, project. Yeah. Also, another part of this project that it was also really important that we didn't know about this, it was photogrammetry. And we introduced uh, all these um, uh, 3D models, uh, mixing them with video, with to do to D uh, video uh, in AR, and um, we yeah mix them with the 3D videos that we were developing later. Um, another part of the process was like working with the digital persona with the avatars of our kind of cinema uh, uh, video. And uh, yeah, this is where like some of them, as you can see here uh, in the right part, it's like some of the pictures that we were seeing before now are three models uh, that we introduced later. Also, you can see how we transform some people into the 3D model and after we modify in them <laughs> because, for example, this is Mariana <laughs> here in the in the team, and um, yeah, um, but, and um, so we came to our project video, uh, our process, like what we were developing but also uh, something that it will be in progress. It's, uh, we have the concept, we have now the knowledge. Um, this knowledge, uh, we will use them to develop this project. And um, this is kind of uh, the, the beginning of what we are going to do. Um, yeah, this is our, some of the screenshots that you, we take from the videos. Um, that we made with Unreal and with Blender. And as you can see, for example, here, we are introducing the pieces, the 3D models that we recreate with the AI. Also, we are introducing, for example, the second person uh, point of view. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for example, you have another screenshot of like what will be uh, good, like what will look like our project maybe in the future. Um, yeah, and uh, this is yeah. <laughs> 
and this is kind of it in these two weeks. <laughs> I think it's more than, <laughs> uh, yeah. And now I will show you, um, because I didn't mention something that is really important, that it's about the narrative of our video, because we decided to use the audio uh, to express uh, the, um, the point of view that we wanted to show. And um, we um, developed their narrative with the AI and we put it into audio and we have like, that we could have like the whole experience with that. So everything that you are going to hear, it's uh, adapted after um, created with the AI into second a narrative, second person narrative, but it will be everything from the AI. And yeah, as, <laughs> as for example, as Kafka will say, <laughs> don't try to uh, make it logical. <laughs> this is like just the beginning for the project. <laughs> Yeah, see. And this will be the video. I hope we will have the sound here. Yeah? I mean, if I put something here, it will sound? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Last night, you had a very strange dream. It was a place they called Diaspora. A strange place, a strange place, a strange place. You were dancing. You watched watch the, the news with a mixture of with horror, a mixture of horror and excitement. excitement. When you when woke you up, up, the dream was real. You, you wished, wished to come back to your country of origin. You wanted, you wanted to, know to know where you were going, but you were scared. They were scared. Yeah. They were scared. Yeah. They were You are the only, only one with the ability to understand, to understand the dream. This is what we call a story. This is what we call a story. A human story. A human story is the story of human beings being human. Sorry, uh, we have some problems with uh, sound. We should reshare the screen. And uh, we'll start from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, I was asking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. Okay. Oof, now we have to stop this ah, and yeah. mute ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're no? right. Ah, okay. Last night, you had a very strange dream. It was a place they called Diaspora. A strange place, a strange place, a strange place. You were dancing. You watched the news with a mixture of horror and excitement. When you woke up, the dream was real. You wish, you wish to come, to come back, back to your country of origin. You wanted, you to, wanted know to know where you were going, but you were scared. They were scared. You, you are the only one with the ability to understand the dream. This is what we call a story. This is what we call a story. A human story. A human story is the story of human beings being human. So you start to think the words of a poem. Now try to explain your thoughts in this order. How would you do it? You don't know what it is, but you can't speak your hand. This is a story of how I came to understand Not a person, but a personification. The condition of life is not a condition of being, it's a state of being, it's a state of being. The problem with this attitude like is that it's not to feel one to resolve a trouble with you. you, the only way to tell is to look. You started to write a book in your head. When you were a child, you kept your eyes on the same. We are not inventing the idea of a beautiful thing. We are inventing a way of thinking that we can apply to ourselves and others. The only way to tell is to look. 
This place is not only the temporary scale that is important. There are plants everywhere and they do not have the power to return from your body the natural body shape, nor do you have the power to destroy the body. And the body of the world is the source of all the misery you are afraid of. The human spirit is not eternal, but flows in time. The human spirit is a material substance. A material substance. <laughs> so, to, to, final, to finish with oh, these. Thank you so much, guys. I think you're muted, so we can't hear oh, you. Yep. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Hi, again. <laughs> We're still here. Okay, so um, as we were saying, this is like uh, just a work in progress. This video, it's not introducing, for example, the unreal parts that we were developing with the second person point of view. And uh, yeah, this is will, something that we will do in the future. And uh, just this is like a little piece or like an introducing part of what we were thinking to do. I hope you like it. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I think what we were going to do is move to the next team, right? And go in groups of two teams. So maybe you already showcase yours. We go with next group and then we comment. We do comments. Okay. Perfect. Bye, guys. Thank you. Yeah, cool. So if any of our guests um, has any comment, I mean, because the workshop really focuses on digital persona as a way to assist user to voluntarily and consciously participate with the, with the digital world. So they were embedding a lot of their own point of view within the projects. Uh, yeah, so the next group, uh, the next project called uh, ESOS. Uh, it's uh, it made by Vivian, Fiorella, Cecilia. All right, Artem, I think that the guests would discuss the project before we move on ah, to the next so one. So we will discuss now, yeah? Not uh, in two Or you want to? Yeah, yeah, because some of them might have ah, to yeah. leave early. So. Yeah, OK. Yeah, let's discuss it now and then switch to the next. Yeah, so. our next yeah. project. Yeah, sorry. sorry, we somehow don't know how to jump in because of the also problems with the sound, I hear, I hear myself so I'm getting a bit interrupted by myself hearing from your screen. So yeah, sorry. we don't really know how to jump in with the comments because you should, uh, sorry, Artem, uh, would, would it be possible for you to mute uh, your screen so we don't hear it? Yeah, we just had an echo. So yeah, I think it's a very difficult, uh, at least, I don't know, for my side, to jump in directly into the discussion. That, that's why maybe uh, we had a bit of a uh, second of silence and digestion of uh, the scene presentation. But uh, uh, first of all, I want to start from my excitement, and I'm absolutely impressed by the narrative of the workshop in general. I think it's absolutely relevant topic, and the quality of work that we see already in the first presentation is just impressive. Um, and I would maybe suggest uh, to immerse us first even with the videos when we see and kind of dream with you through the video and then maybe after giving some touches and explanation how did you work on that because I think the video itself is very um, uh, kind of it can talk instead of you it creates it immerses us so much into for me it was a dream I see this uh, basically daily uh, or every night uh, a similar type of dream and this is very interesting from your video is exactly this point of view of seeing yourself within this video, seeing yourself, seeing yourself as a physical slash digital personality and changing a bit of the role. How do you perceive a human or a person within this uh, hybrid reality that you're reconstructing? I think it's very beautiful uh, 
narrative and the discussion to push forward if you want to continue this uh, project and uh, extend it. I don't know if anybody wants to jump in maybe and catch up on my words on the tours. Yeah, yes, I could, I could jump in. Um, I think it's interesting that you say this thing with um, uh, like that it reminds you some kind of a dream. Um, to me, part of um, uh, the very interesting idea of the project was um, this idea of the, the, second, the second person and the, like making a dialogue uh, kind of thing. Because uh, if, you, if, you, if you're training um, the, the AI to kind of like speak in the second, in the second, um, uh, in the second person, you can kind of start having a dialogue with it in a way. So then it starts kind of feeds back into your conversation. And that would be an interesting part that I think that the team could work more, um, more on. Um, I'm wondering, so usually dreams are kind of our are, are first person narratives. So we dream um, what we're doing or what we may be doing and things like that. And I was wondering how the people in the group um, would imagine bridging this like first person narrative of the dreams usually and then the second, the second person of uh, uh, the second person narrative that the AI constructs. So, what's the relation between the dream and the AI? Is the dream constructed by the AI, or is it something that I don't know? Like, what's the relation between these two? Question: uh, We we say we say we think uh, I believe in the about the dream, about the dream. like a but. like a shared dream. Uh, it's a, pa a part of how we interpret the dreams and a part how we and uh, how the AI interpret a dream. Previously, we try to make uh, this neural network understand who is a dream or so what is a dream yeah yeah it, it makes it, it makes it i mean maybe i don't really Maybe you would need to mute yourselves when we're talking or... Yeah, great. Um, yeah, it makes sense what you're saying. Um, maybe the question was mostly like, what, was, what were the texts that you trained the AI on? Was it the books that you, that you showed in the beginning? the AI was trained on the book that they showed uh, in the beginning and they use it as a, like um, the um, source for the narrative so they ask AI to uh, answer some questions about dreams about uh, this uh, first person second person points of view and uh, to build uh, the narrative out of uh, the answers that neural ne uh, network gave? I guess uh, answered the question. Yeah, I, I, it was kind of hard for our side to actually hear the comments. Do you hear me now, Pro? Yeah. Okay. So but I think what Artem was saying was basically but that. Let's do oh, one thing. Sorry, it yeah. seems we, we, we were having some issues here. So, also to clarify, uh, let's do this, this thing. Let's go to continue with the next group, okay, with the next two groups. And after the next two groups, we can continue the conversation. It's going to be better because we are having some issues. And also for the people here, also for the groups, I, I shall have clarified that. Let's do the next, the next thing. When you are presenting, you come, out, you come out here and you present. Then you go to your sites, and the next conversation, you don't have to use this mic here in the table. We can use the two mics that we have here, okay? So we don't create this kind of mess. That, that's all right. So you, don't, uh, you, you mind, guys, if we move to the next one, and then we, we keep on with the, with the conversation? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So shall we move to the next, next group?
Yes, so the next group is uh, uh, ESOS uh, and uh, made by Vivian, uh, Fiorella, Cecilia, and uh, Alvaro, and it's a project that discusses the future of many futures. So let's welcome guys here. Good afternoon. Six. I am Viviani. I am a Brazilian social researcher. And my team uh, has Alvaro here. He's a digital product uh, designer. Fiorella, that is a Peruvian filmmaker and uh, set designer. And Cecilia, that is a video editor and a filmmaker. First of all, we are going to show you our video, and then we talk about our creative process.
control L? No. Sí, pero tengo que abrir con... Are we sharing? The, we need to share this with Zoom. It's sharing. Esto se pone justo. When we started to discuss our project argument, I thought it would be possible to achieve a common idea. Sorry. Everybody would agree that a future vision made of harmony between nature and human beings should be everyone's dream. Well, it wasn't so easy. We are just four in the group, and each one had a different vision about what would like to be your future. But it wasn't a problem, as we wanted to work together. Our differences, in fact, should be our strength. So, we started to share our experiences, discuss about life, realities, possibilities, expectations. We shared lunch time, dinner time, messages by WhatsApp, drive archives, loves, problems and dreams. We can say we become friends. We assumed that the bad thing in thinking about the future is to be open to diversity. I want to express my ideas, and it's very nice to hear the other ideas. By this time, the workshop started to work on the volumetric techniques, photogrammetry, artificial intelligence, text generation, avatars, volumetric narratives, so much new softwares and information. We started to look at the objects, at the city, at our bodies in a volumetric way. We realized that we can think volumetrically, but you can't think volumetrically if you stay in your own center. You need to move around what you want to capture. You move. While you keep moving, you are able to observe from different points of view and you give the chance to others to explore the possibilities of a 360-degree view. Maybe some positions will be uncomfortable to you, but it's important that you keep moving. All that reflections should result in a visual interface, and that's how ESOS was born a new universe of many points of view, a holy universe of possibilities. Isus is the Greek word for maybe. It's formed by four express letters and can generate a surrounding sound. Isus. <laughs> we see Isus as a volumetric project and we want to expand in a way that each one can insert your vision of the future and see what other people are thinking. Maybe there will be as many visions as people collaborating. Imagine, collaborate, make it happen. Okay, we can now move on to a conversation, a brief conversation with this group and last group. So you can stay the remainder, but I recommend you to, if you want to speak, use the mic, okay? That's going to be rotating around. 
Uh, Pro, do you hear me, Ellie? Yes, we do. Okay, we can go ahead with the with the review. Hey, you guys want to start here? Hi. Uh, sorry. Yeah, this is probably going to be the question of the day, but can you hear me? Yes, we do. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, uh, thanks Yeah, to both teams uh, for the lovely presentations um, and very compelling projects. Um, I guess uh, just starting with the second team, um, one of the questions that kind of comes to mind is with anything that's collaborative, um, you always run into the, the question of governance in a way, right? I mean, you kind of talked about this through your own approaches. You all have different visions. And then that lends itself to the question of how do you agree upon a particular vision or how do you prevent, let's say, the hijacking or the dominance of particular sets of vision, which then maybe like starts to lend itself to ideas of consensus or ideas of the majority. Um, so I was kind of wondering a little bit about what role um, or how, how were these types of differences negotiated or how do these, how do you foresee that these softwares or tools allow for those types of differences to exist? Because um, you spoke a lot, of course, about things like harmony and getting along, but of course, um, and not to bring it back to whatever's happening today, but there's obviously a lot of things that don't get along, right? And those types of things maybe have a place. Um, uh, otherwise, maybe it falls into the trap of um, presenting a vision that kind of disassociates from things that are friction, and friction is not always necessarily a negative thing, right? Um, or it could be a positive, or it could be, uh, or it's a real thing for that matter. So I, I guess I'm kind of curious about how do you see the role of negotiation taking place in um, this volumetric cinema, and uh, what role maybe does AI have in um, interfering with that negotiation? Okay. In fact, we didn't use very much the AA outputs because we were so we had so diverse so so different uh, views inside the group that we couldn't uh, add these AA outputs. But about governance, um, the the idea started because I I said no, it would be great if we have our oh, nature. Look, I love nature, and Alvaro said no, I want to leave the matrix. I don't want that na nature, I don't like that. No, how now? <laughs> and then Fiorello said, no, I would like the, the both, both worlds. I would like some nature and some structure because I like technology. And, and we started to think about all these worlds that uh, each one could uh, afford your difference. Yeah? And uh, in, in, in when thinking about negotiation, and that's the end of the video when we put all the spheres together, like we, we can, and we say, we have, really we have our argument that we didn't read, I could read now, uh, that says that, that we think about a movement of expansion, like so many ideas going out, and then a movement of compression, that the ideas start to come together, <laughs> and we start to, uh, to have this kind of negotiation between uh, but I know uh, there will be only conflict. We won't achieve a moment that we want uh, everybody we think as the same, uh, the same things. We, it would, would be always a conflict. But we can uh, be together, even in a conflict. I, I would like to, to read this argument uh, because it was uh, during the process we are doing the video and we, we were writing and rewriting this, this text. We can't say there will be only one future. Each consciousness creates your own reality and all that visions of the future pos and possible worlds are already there in our imagination as virtual. Isus is made up of various visions of the future as a metaphor for our diversity. Each one brings the values, the illusions, the references of what is believed to be something better, or maybe worse. Ideas that can find space to penetrate each other. Other times collide, generate conflicts. 
They are all existing in the realm of the possible. There are so many possibilities for futures that it is necessary to allow others to be added in a continuous movement of expansion. But maybe there will be a time that it will start to make the opposite movement, the compression. So the important thing to have in mind is that we are always in movement. You can't stop, you move. So that's the idea that maybe we don't know. <laughs> that's why we call the, the, pro the, uh, the project ISOS. Uh. Okay, just to say say to you that okay, the, the output for the workshop has, has been a, a video, but we have developed the experience. If anyone wants to try the game, it's in my laptop. So just ask me for fly through these worlds, this universe. Just in case. Thank you. Well, Victor or George, um, Maria, do, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I would like to jump in. Uh, you know, it's, I'm always following what Kieran is doing. And for me, it's always all the things together at the same time. And when I see it working, it's really uh, exciting and, and fun. So thank you very much for, for sharing it. Uh, and then I was watching this beautiful glowing character. And I start to ask myself, I have two questions, I think. Who is this character? And, and, and what happened with the body of this character? Like, so now you're proposing this, this future that is whatever makes you happy, whatever works, it's valid. Uh, but you know, we have our physical bodies. What will happen if our physical bodies like in, in your multiple futures? And the second question is, you have this very funny slogan of imagine, collaborate, make it happen. That sounds like a Silicon Valley startup. Why do you feel the urge for, for such a slogan? Can I explain that after? Yeah. Hi, hello, hello, Vale. Um, first, for the character, I think we, we think about the, the color in white, I think it's very neutral. And then the, the word light, lighting movement, always like maybe we, this character maybe can be an animal, a plant, well, have, has the form of, of a human, but we don't know what is exactly, no? But it's a lighting movement, a life, really. Um, that is the character, <laughs> white and light in movement. And when we first uh, thought about our argument, we didn't want a character, uh, a man or a woman, with, no, you can't say what the gender. And uh, we thought that the spheres were each, each person's thoughts, like conscious. So the character can get into your mind. The, he's getting like energy, you know, bodies of energy that can, can get into your mind and see what you, you are thinking about future. And this is Logan by the end because I am a publicitary. <laughs> and I bet, uh, we want to, to, this, uh, to develop this project as a platform, online platform with the game that our developed and uh, we, we could uh, receive another visions of future and, and start to add to this platform so people could collaborate and I imagine not other futures collaborate giving us your visions and we can uh, do this input in the platform. Can I jump in? Yes, please. Uh, yes, both projects, fantastic work. I really love it. Um, all the team, including the students, tutors, and organizers, 
Congratulations. It's really pleasant to see the work. Very informative, brings a lot of uh, inspiration. Um, first project for me, as I was maybe mentioning a few minutes ago, uh, the most exciting for me is the role of a human and how do you evolve understanding of a personage you know, in your narrative. When as I think the second project is more looking to a notion of space for me here, when you're introducing this uh, world to world transi transitions through the different scenes, now you're basically creating a new type of space, a new type of navigation throughout the narrative and starting to talk about the new type of morphology of uh, digital space. Uh, and when it's the first project, I think for me, talking more about maybe this hybridity of our perception of our dream of a talk of a machine and a talk of your own dream and creating this metamorphosis, which is very much hybrid now. And I think that you're bringing this to uh, parts, but maybe I would uh, also return to the question of Victor uh, when he's asking you about more physicality, you know, if I... Uh, got you correctly about the physicality of our personal physical avatar. How do you, through this type of investigations, how, uh, like with introduction of these new tools, do you change the interaction of our physical avatars with your digital avatars or the digital scenarios? Do you um, hack our perception do you hack our uh yeah the way how do we interact our relationship with the physical do you propose a new way new immersive way of seeing this digital world and participating in that that would i would really question through this project and i think that you are suggesting a lot of vision in that that maybe if you both guys could reflect on that that would be very much appreciated or just my thoughts to throw you for the future development. Cool, thank you. Um, awesome. Jo George, you wanted to say something? I, I could jump in if they don't have, um, or if they want to respond, or I could jump in and basically continue. No, you can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I, I, I can just continue, Maria, but I also want to. Um, echo both uh, Victor and um, Hadin um, in what they were saying. I think I think that the project, that this last project, kind of like starts from what I believe is kind of a solid base, and um, um, it's 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 a solid base to start from thinking the volumetric cinema. Um, as they were saying, these different perspectives as kind of is kind of a necessary precondition for this volumetric thinking. So it's not just a one person or a one perspective thing. And exactly, I think that incorporating this diversity should be reflected in the way you're constructed, both the body, as Victor was saying, and um, the, the making of this environment, as Hadin was saying. So both like the decisions of structuring this body or then the, um, the ways that the body will interact with its environment and have to reflect this diversity. And what I'm like basically thinking is basically that one, one um, a user of this platform that you're suggesting could, for example, be making the body, but uh, this body will live in a certain environment that another uh, user of this platform is creating or something like that. So you're finding ways that these things are coming into dialogue and then your ideas about this diversity, that it's, it's also very nice that it came out of the struggle of the group itself and kind of was built into the platform that you're making. And then you're actually kind of, you, you know, you can, you can see how, how difficult it is to, to to make this diversity work within it. So maybe like making this platform that you're actually trying to negotiate these differences would be, I think, very interesting. Um, Yancy, go for it. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, Except add. we can't hear you. Yeah, we, we can't hear you. I need to oh, uh, Yeah, I just wanted to add to this um conversation that um that's interesting how it's all intertwined like uh, the process of making 
uh, when people interacting with their bodies together, trying to collaborate, yeah, and they, um, like, in the process of finding this shared space, shared space of their thought. And this is the most uh, interesting part uh, in that, I think. Um, and what, what I think it's a little bit, like, lack in this work is this um, finding uh, the way how to uh, how to represent actually shared world between these different worlds, because right now what we see is uh, is different bubbles, yeah, is different separated uh, like universes you can travel through, but um, that's why you have you just not deciding how much other universe will like penetrate other, how they change each other. Um, and I think it, in the process of developing this project, you, like, further, you will um, come to this idea that, uh, okay, if we're making a platform and everybody can, like, upload their, um, their realities, their thoughts, their points of view, how to actually this, like, merging and... Um, um, maybe we can add uh, something from from first team. I really like this AI um, and I, AI phrase saying that uh, you're not person, you're a personification. And uh, I think it's interesting if um, in this shared space will use this, you know, personification algorithms forming the like your your the this universe for you according to your um, your parameters but um, they um, like like Facebook like this uh, Twitters and stuff they, they are already doing this and they making these bubbles intersect in the field of your personification and this is a like stating this big question of uh, like what is person in this digital world actually uh, yeah <laughs> Debora wanted to say something right we saw that little hand trying to raise <laughs> yeah okay I guess probably the question is about profiling a little bit, like trying to understand similarities and like differences and how that can be translated into a graphical way of starting to visualize different worlds, which for me for the first thing was quite like an important point of view because we are like talking about different ways of seeing, but we were never like kind of questioning from which one I'm looking at. I'm like always looking into different, but okay, from which one I'm... And somehow this was like kind of merging with this idea of nature versus technology or versus uh, human and and I, for me like there's no difference between all of them right and some but somehow in the way that it was presented it looked like there was right so um in in, in both scenarios what i feel is that the sharing platform uh, should start to establish uh, two points one is a methodology the or the other one will be a protocol a, proto a protocol for interaction where like the issue of profiling, as much as I like it or I don't like it, I think it will be helpful to at least understand it in order to like move forward. And the methodology in order to understand uh, if the tools that you guys have been developing or like learning will be necessary for your users to be able to interact with it. Because when you are saying, send, send me your future visions, I, I don't really understand how I will do that. And that will be basically presented through like I imagine like a protocol, like a way for me to start to understand how I interact with this new reality or this new uh, platform, I guess. Yeah, because it would, wouldn't be by the video, it would be by the platform online, by, by this game. So like the video would be just uh, the first presentation of the project. Mm -hmm. This is the first. I mean, I'm actually pretty, oh, sorry, can you kind of out mute? 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm really stimulated by uh, the conversation in the sense that I realize it's also because of the different roles and how we were trained. Most, most of the guest panels here were actually have an architecture background. So we're always concerned with the moment where a lot of different possibilities collapses into one. And that's where design get implemented. But at the same time in this room, we realize we have a lot of different people from different disciplines who are very used to media and not having to collapse a lot of possibilities. So, um, but I really value this question of how we can have all this different vision into governance. And one way I can think of is maybe to have all of these vision um, as a conceptual stage, even before we make master plans. So we can actually engage citizens in um, creating all these worlds. And then it's up to designers and planners to absorb all of these different worlds, digital worlds with or without body, and to really think about what actually this user generated content um, signals how the designer should design in a sense. So I think in that way, it might have a collaboration that are role intact as opposed to anonymous and as yeah, a, sec a next level social networking type of thing. But cool. I feel like we should move on to the next project, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. It was such an engaging conversation. But we're not there yet. So. Well, now we go with team number seven, which is Chema González, Esteban Álvarez, Carlos Padial, and Javier Torres. They are going to present their project called Samsara. Well, first of all, thanks for to all of you for being here. Uh, we have developed a project that is called Samsara, who talks about Hinduism, three ways of life, three worlds connected, and then the, way, the, the kind of video game that we have downloaded. Uh, we are a group of four people, Carlos, which is a 3D artist, and also he used to work with free software, with open source, sorry, software. Uh, and Carlos, Javi, and me, uh, that are architects, from the University of Polytechnic here in Madrid. And we are from Granada, Galicia, and all many different, in many different places in Spain. So first of all, uh, we would like to talk a little about the meaning of the project, which is Samsara. And then we're going to show you a short video that we have developed in order to understand the three worlds that we have developed talking about life, death, and reincarnation, which is the meaning of samsara in the Buddhism religion, and how those worlds are connected by the self in an ascendant way that talks about the dismaterialism from the body through the architect, uh, the identity of the, individ uh, of the individualism uh, going through those worlds and how the architect and the surroundings affect to the, to bo to the body of the understanding of the of the own uh, video game that we have developed through the, through the main character, which is a digital persona. Uh, can we show the video first? We have. No more good sound either. But there's there's no sound. No, no, the video has sound. There are no sound. Yeah, but it's not it's not because of the video. It's because of the computer. We are trying to. We can just. Are you supposed to have sound, guys? We can't hear it. I mean, the problem is that we have developed a, literally a video game that yeah. runs in our computer, uh, and we would like to show it to you uh, before Walls are the not video, and then... Yeah. 
have to later share a lot of stuff. I have a lot of screen. Okay. okay. It's, it's crazy, but yeah, we can hear you, but they can't. <laughs> uh, all right. Walls are not necessary, but the regularity of their construction is a hindrance to the application of them. The walls, on the other hand, are to be as smooth and uniform as they can be. They are to be designed in the manner of an oxen house, in the manner of a tree house, in the manner of a fell house. They are not to be designed in such a manner as to obstruct the view of the eye, and to render the view of the whole person invisible. The forest is a forest, and man is the source of all vegetation. But man is a vegetable, and thus a forest is a forest. The invention of the roof of the house is a... The digital persona is a preternatural device, a way of conceiving of the world. It is a man's mind, a man's imagination, a man's form. In that sense, the image is all about the person, about the form. The man is the image, and the image is the form. The image is the form, and the form is the image. The man is the form, and the man is the form. We were in the middle of a year, and the world had been a dream for me. I was a young man, a boy. Okay, so probably... Can you really hear us? Not now. I need, I need. So already, can you hear us? The ones that are connected. So right now you can hear us, right? The ones that are connected in the Zoom meeting. Wait a second. This is not the right viewer. <laughs> Sorry. Open with, no? So okay, well, like, I really would like to explain you the video, which talks about those three worlds that we have developed. Uh, the first one talks about the materiality, the architecture, the two cultures, the Asian and the, and the Occidental one, connected in the two faces of the world, like the same faces in the in money. Uh, the second one talks about nature, how we connect it with the nature, how we can even uh, understand the nature through the path of our body. And the last one is like, a, uh, like the hell, who talks about, I mean, it's the same way that in Siddhartha's uh, novel, talks about the, the Siddhartha, Siddhartha Gautama, which is the young Buddha, and his own development through those uh, different environments. And this is the main, Pick the, the main images that we would like to give it to you, who talks about the understanding of the world and how the individual is uh, related with his vital moment, the relationship between the body, the soul, the spirit, and also the digital identity. And the understanding to all of those uh, different topics in the body through, the, uh, through different cultures in the global data, uh, in, the global, in the global data world. Then the understanding of the individual and his identity distort his relation in these immaterial factors uh, in relation to the surrounding, as we have said, and how this environment can create interference in the individual's identity about himself. So we have worked uh, during the course with all of those topics through three different uh, main aspects. That's the end. Which are, yeah, this is one of the main, uh, this is the third world, which is the one that we has called the, the hell. Next one. And here are the three. <laughs> the computer is also broken. <laughs> so the next, the next picture talks about the three topics that we have worked in this, in this course, which is the scene, the environment that we have created, the photogrammetry that we have done, how we can work with a 3D model later, and how we can connect all of those worlds um, in the video game that we have developed. The second aspect that we have worked with is the digital persona, the main character, that we can even scan ourselves and give it uh, different movements through different softwares that apply the, the character and animation to move around this world. And the third aspect 
that is in this, exactly, in this one, <laughs> is the AA narrative that we have give it to the AA. Uh, a lot of text that, work, that talks about Siddhartha, that talks about Buddhism, that talks about identity of the individualism through different aspects, to create like a narrative that we have used sometimes to have an idea that we would like to work with and then to create our own narrative. For example, we have used some reference about the Truchette patron to create this scene that talks about this kind of world of, of worlds that replicate itself in infinite, uh, in an infinite numbers of times. Then with the character, we have worked with the two faces to create a digital persona. And then we have mixed all of them in the workflow that we have followed uh, during the course. Uh, next one. This is the, this, the, those are some images that we have created uh, during the course that talks about the three aspects, the narrative, the scene, and the character. Mix it all of them uh, to create the video game. Next one. Next one. And this is the workflow that we have followed. First of all, we're working with Blender. <laughs> then we have worked with Unreal. And then we have created a video game that we, will, that we will really would like to uh, join you to test it in VR. And we have just developed it right now, like 10 minutes ago. And we have been able to show it to you. Uh, it's like an app that we can download in your Oculus uh, Quest app. And you can play this short video game as many times as you want. And these are just some frames for our video. And then we would like to, to, to show you a short uh, idea of the, of the video game that we have done. My colleague is going to show it to you how to play this video game moving around those worlds sí. with one of those digital personas that we have developed. Yeah. Just give us one minute with all of those computer problems that we, have in, with, we are having. Yeah. I think that you have to... Yeah. So this is the video game. Yeah. This is a short uh, idea that we have done, which is like create those three stands. I mean, for example, this stand, the walls that you have around you uh, can rotate itself uh, when you get closer to them. So it, it has like uh, this idea that the uh, environment has some relation with the own identity of the character. Then you can move to the next world, wherever you want. Sorry for all of those troubles, but the course itself is so experimental, so we are still <laughs> experimenting in our own, even during the presentation. That's, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, that's the second world, which is a mix with nature through ruins of architecture, and all of it is, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Just touch again. You have three lives in the game. You have, we have just already lost one of them. <laughs> we still have two. Just move to the next one. Exactly. I mean, for me and all of my colleagues has been a real issue to work with all of those tools and even a real training for us because we have never worked with video games. We are 3D artist development, even architect. So we have with 3D worlds we have worked with 3D worlds, but not with interactive one. And even with the experiment to create a video game with all of those tools, mixing it, and giving even us the, the chance to work with VR, with the Oculus set. Yeah, this is the Buddha. <laughs> oh, very. This is the Buddha, this is, which is the, the, like the character that guide, that guide all our uh, movement through the world. And then the last world. Yep. So this is like the hell, we have called it, and have these different rocks 
that move itself and even look like if it's breathing. Some smoke. Yeah, and all of those characters that you can see over here, we have this idea that are like, <laughs> we have called kind of orocruxes that looks like parts of the soul of the main character that you have to leave it behind if you, if you want to continue with this way to the nirvana, the perfection, uh, in this samsara uh, way through. <laughs> so if you, if you are able to go to the last rock, which is the one on the top, <laughs> you win the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this, this has been our work. I think that we are, we are really happy with the work that we have developed. Probably not with the, with the performance, but with the... Can we <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can even win the game. And even the work of optimization of the meshes, uh, to create like a real workflow that allow us to have this video game ready for you. Uh, for all of us has been uh, a little bit tricky, but also we have learned like a lot. So thank you very much to all of you. Thanks Artem and Jason that has been the professors here and also provides and uh, Eli. And yeah, thanks to all of you. No, thanks to you. Thanks to you guys. So, it's working this one? Okay. So, shall we, shall we move to the next team? And then after that, we can do some review. Uh, next team is team number three, which is Cristobal, Pedro, Fer, Diego Esther. And their project is called Reduce Reality. Go ahead, guys. Hello, hello everybody. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you all here because it's a rainy Saturday carnival in Madrid and you are spending the afternoon evening with us, so thank you very much. This is only a uh, work in progress, so for, we really appreciate that you're here. And for people that is at home, the experts or the more intellectual cinema people on, on the other side of the screen, thank you very much, really, like, it's very, Valuable. So uh, first, we would like to show the piece. I think we should start with the okay. uh, talking about the concept. And okay. Nice, because you're going to see how we wanted something that didn't happen at the end. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very common, Great. I guess, in these experimental um, workshops. So you can read here some keywords like multi-species coexistence, ancestral cultures, decolon decolonization, cultural morphing, what is really nice term that Pedro made up, <laughs> and cyberpunk or exotherism, um, because we wanted to build a reduced reality because we wanted to be special, of course. And every time we saw something about volumetric cinema, it was hyper-reality or augmented reality stuff. So why don't we create something more quiet and empty and stuff like that? And also, together with the topic of like what would have happened if the colonization or all the bad decisions that humanity have taken in the past didn't happen like in this direction. Uh, next one. So here is the abstract where we explain a little bit that um, we were imagining objects, spaces, and persona of the future inspired by ancestral forbidden cultures, but also uh, like the prehistoric uh, Hispanic ones, or sorry, the pre-Hispanic ones, and uh, North African Amazigh one, for example, that is also a forbidden culture that is uh, almost extinct at the moment. But also some other members of the team bring some imaginary worlds from their childhoods or the ghost or of these esoteric magical uh, stories. So we fed our AI with uh, books about bi biopolitics, technology, 
botanics, cyberpunk, and shamanic encounters. And she gave us nice sentences like, humanity's future is located in the realms of the human mind. Our origin stories are preserved through the use of combination of folklore and science. This is my favorite one. And shamans are there to see and to hear the divine message of the, of the children. What is really nice, I, I really love that she uh, remind us about the children's have these kind of answers of the pure part of uh, the humanity sometimes, right? So um, we took, for example, movements of dancing kids, or uh, we were inspired by this connection of the nature and the spirituality. Uh, surprise, I saw that all the other teams were also very inspired by these kind of topics. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe it was because provides lectures at the beginning inspire us all in the same direction. Or maybe it's because the fact of having volumetric cinema as a, a sculptural material there that you can create whatever um, makes you more think in the future and this, um, this really uh, positive feeling that we want to project, right, with nature and these other parts of our humanity that are, are forbidden and we think is important. Yeah, next. So here are the books. I already read you one of the sentences that the AI gave us, but uh, there is another one that says, um, yeah, like, for example, one of my favorites is shamans are uh, there to see and to hear the divine message of the children, and this is one and only way to speak into them. Also, the form of a soul is a type of animal, and in the essence of the soul, it is impossible to know how to achieve a new life. I don't know, it sounds crazy, but for us was inspiring because we didn't really uh, pursue to nar narrate a, a story that makes 100% sense all the time. We only wanted to create these images in our brains. Um, yeah, yeah uh, I think the, the main exercise here was trying to like gather all this ancestral knowledge. Like here you can see the, the popol vuh from the Mayans and we took some other uh, cosmological visions from Incas and Hispanic tribes and ask them questions that we were wondering ourselves. And yeah, we got some, some good results like this. And from those ideas, we started working on the, on the personas and on the, on the characters and on the space that we will like express these things. At the end, we used one character. The only one that was alive at the end was the yeah, first one. Yeah, was this guy, Kamasot which is a Mayan deity. He is a, a bat from the underworld. But in the, in the Poporbu, in the fourth chapter, uh, it is mentioned that he, well, the, like the original tribes from the Mayans and the, and the underworld gods come to an agreement where the, go, the, the gods give them fire and the Mayans have to sacrifice one of their sons. Uh, so this is the guy that, uh, communicates between these two worlds and he's kind of like the messenger for, not for peace, but for, for giving something to humanity, which is fire. And yeah, you're gonna see him on our piece. Just wanna say that the guy on the really left is Pedro, but he inverted the, the lights and the darks in Photoshop and that's what it came out. What is like, yeah, you can create extraterrestrials or weird people very easily as you can see. Uh, some of the other symbols that we worked on is, uh, well, a lot of it is inspired on Mexican culture, which is where I'm from, and that's what I'm most familiar with. I'm going to go quickly through them. This is uh, the tomb tom of Palenque, uh, of Pakal, sorry. Uh, Pakal was a, a Mayan emperor, and there's something really interesting here with, the, with that tombstone because he... Well, he's supposed to be laying down and the tree of life coming from his body. But there's a lot of theories about, uh, so that if you flip this thing horizontally, it looks like it's an astronaut going to outer space. And, and there's a whole big debate on 
on what it actually means and where did all the Mayans go and all their knowledge, because they were into astrology and all of these crazy things. So, yeah, that's a, a big component. This thing here, it's the directly here. Okay, uh, that thing there, it's the Aztec calendar. It's an agricultural calendar with like different seasons and it marks the rains and it was basically used by the Aztecs or the Mexicas for uh, knowing when to, to start their crops and they basically live their lives uh, on that calendar. Here we have Cempasuchil, uh, which is the flower used in Day of the Dead in Mexico to guide the spirits back to their tombs and that they can um, communicate with the with the relatives. And finally, we have, this is a hard one to pronounce, Chalchihuitlicue, <laughs> which is a, it's a, it's a goddess for rain. Also in the, it's used in the Mexica culture, but also, also in the Mayan culture. And it's just a symbol of water, rain, rivers, all of this. And you can see the contrast of what the work we have done with photogrammetry uh, around the Matadero, trying to capture the real life in 3D. But because we wanted, because we have this chance of creating a non-existing world, we didn't want it so much to introduce these elements, and we went for uh, these other ones, making them in 3D. As well. Also, I, I forgot to mention that all of these elements are put into this scenario, oh, sorry, which is uh, Plaza España here in Madrid and uh, Sol, which are two like, uh, yeah, big parts of the city. And we wanted to bring back these elements from the Mayans and sort of imagine what would have happened if these cultures were not extinct and maybe colonization would have happened differently and just doing a, a really free exercise of imagination. And, and yeah, with the help of the AI, we, we got these ideas. And now I think we can show the video. And oh. Yeah, I don't want to forget to mention that Pedro did the audio, Pedro here. And he also uh, experimented by placing some videos that he generates with code in this uh, uh, flat uh, frames that uh, Jancy help us out <laughs> to figure out how to do this stuff. Also, Fair that is not here with us today, but he also tried some things with, what, which software is this one? I don't know. <laughs> okay, but he, there was a lot of experimenting. You're gonna see that the, the, the piece that um, we, we did at the end is just one little thing of all the like failures, but I don't like to call them failures, but a lot of things we have been doing, but at the end they are not being shown in there. And yeah, the kids dancing as inspirational material that I told you before. And um, so uh, for us was um, full of learnings, full of challenges. And I, I think it's very illustrative this, uh, what we wanted to create an empty world, calm and quiet and then what we end up doing because we were newbies experimenting with the material. And yeah, we can play. Yeah. Bro, do you hear me now? Hello? We say here. Wait. Pero Eli, can you can, podéis poner la pantalla, por favor, para que los veamos a ellos? Artem, can you change the screen so we see them? Ah. Because I don't know if they are actually listening to anything. Okay. Okay. So, bro, do you hear us or not? No, they don't hear us. Maybe we can use this mic. Do you hear us now? No? We can hear you very faintly, but there's lots of popping. What did you say? We can hear us. Like, uh, this mic is working, but it's uh, making noises, and this one works. Uh, this one, they don't hear. Okay. So, with this one, do you hear me? That's better. Yes. Better. Yes. 
Oh, there is Thank this you. weird popping sound, right? It's manageable? No yeah, popping no sound right now. Yeah, it's good cool. right now. Maybe it's the way you hold the mic. I, I mean, the other, I mean, we have two mics here. One is not working at all. Uh, and this one, uh, maybe we can try to fix it, fix it. Yeah, this one sounds good. Yeah, now sounds we'll good? Yeah, now sounds good? Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we can play the, the movie. Guys, can you turn off the lights there? Hey. That's so cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so now we can move on to uh, um, like 20, 25 minutes of review. Uh, Pro, Eli, Maria, Victor, the floor is yours. Thank you, guys. Um, Victor and Maria, or Haddon and Deborah. You know, I really, really love the idea of reduced reality. I would like to spend a lot of time on it, especially when you have a bad hangover. I imagine that the reduced reality would be like an amazing experience to go through the day. And there is something that I think it's very interesting that you said that the volumetric cinema is, is more like setting up a world and letting people play free. Uh, but I'm not so convinced about that because cinema is, is, is not only taking the eye of someone and using a lens as the eye and take the person to look at specific things at specific moments, that is the role of the camera, but it involves other things like the, the sound design that you did so well or cutting and editing. Uh, and then I would like to ask what other resource of cinema you are still using uh, that are similar with non-volumetric cinema, let's say. That's a very challenging question. I'm very happy that you bring, bring the topic. If you don't mind, I would like to answer <laughs> Victor. I don't think I, I have an answer to that question. Um, maybe the team does. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. yes, great. Yeah, sorry for interrupting your, uh, yeah, I really, I'm really looking forward to hearing the feedback of more of you. But uh, thank you, Victor, for bringing up that topic because um, this workshop inspired me to 
um, create a next experiment that is going to be trying to create a piece that is narrating the same kind of story or giving us the same kind of content. And one is going to be made in volumetric and the other one is going to be in conven conventional cinema. And I want to uh, test with some viewers and not only do a qualit qualitative experiment and asking them, I also even want to use neural sensors and bio biometry for uh, measuring the response. So I'm super into what you just mentioned now. Thank you. Yeah, great. I, I think maybe just to add to that, um, the beginning of cinema was actually projecting certain image in like a rounded ball, I think in the 1800s, maybe in Paris on top of a shopping mall or something. So actually the outside of cinema was more volumetric than we have what we have now. And this world to world transition and the frame to frame and the montage was one thing. But then actually, if we look into etymology of cinema, it was this illusion of movement. And I think because it's not a VR space where the user can be navigating freely, it's not really the authorship of traditional cinema where it really grabs your eye, but it's almost like you're constantly preempting the control of navigation. So the designer controls certain aspect and a user also controls certain aspect. And I agree, it's always a slippery relationship between who is actually in control of the system. And that's why we think it's interesting. Yeah, also something else maybe I wanna add in, in this context of reduced reality, which I, I also love about this project um, um, in thinking about how this reduced reality could happen volumetrically in these spaces. I know we talked a lot about like bringing in different elements of like disrupting or reducing the actual geometry or the spatial experience um, with different simulations and potentials. And I love that it inspired you to think about real-time data um, and that you can maybe take this to the next step of how do we bring in the censorship or the sensing, the sensing of an environment in real time, whether it's with biofeedback or other types of sensors to actually reduce or enhance these volumetric experiences. Because I think that that's, that's something that Current's been excited about since day one and we want to keep developing it. And it's so nice to see that you were inspired by it and we'll see where you take it from here. Yeah. Haddon, you wanted to add something? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, th thanks both teams. Uh, really lovely work. I thought one of the things that stood out um, or that, that could be paralleled is it felt like there was somehow an ethical dimension that was embedded in both of the projects. Um, so the first one kind of following along this kind of Buddhist ideology and trying to maybe bridge the, bridge the gap um, between, let's say, Western contemporary sciences and then ancient or Buddhist practices. And then in this particular one, looking a little bit at, um, uh, sorry, I'm kind of being escaped right now, but you know what I mean. There's some, <laughs> that I, 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 yeah, yeah, the, the reverse, reverse colonization or the decolonization. And I, I thought it was super interesting because it, it, it got me thinking a little bit about the possibility for um, that, that kind of real-time updating feedback and modification of narrative in real-time based on um, certain actions. Um, so I don't know if anybody here watches Rick and Morty, but does anybody here watch Rick and Morty? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Anyways, there, there's an episode where uh, he gets... <laughs> so, so there's an episode where they get these death crystals and he just wants to die with this girl he loves and this death crystal shows him how he's gonna die based on what he's doing at the moment. And so he's updating his decisions in real time in order to get to that end goal. Um, and in the case of the first project, there was a clear kind of goal, like to reach nirvana. And it got me thinking about the dialogue between ethics, your decisions, and the capacity for the game to update itself in order for you to kind of, right? Because like, at least from the outside, Buddhism is this kind of weird <laughs> esoteric thing where like how the hell do you get to nirvana? Nobody really knows, life is a journey type of thing. And in the Western construct, there's always like a goal or reward function. And I'm wondering about the kind of bridging of the gap between the reward function that's embedded in the volumetric cinema as a way to kind mm -hmm. of modify or reshape or individualize experiences, which kind of ties into what you were talking about as well, kind of um, but, but I think it's really interesting and powerful to embed 
this type of like ethics within the mechanisms, so it's not just a tool, but it's somehow mm -hmm. grounded in some underlying uh, motivation, right? And I think kind of exploiting, exploiting and exploring that is, is very interesting. So thanks for sharing your work, yeah. I think Yancy would like to talk about CCM, which is like real-time update of data parcel in the gaming engine, right? Um, no. <laughs> You're reading Yancy's mind. <laughs> yeah, I took his line now. He has nothing else to say. <laughs> I, I I was thinking. Uh, Is he speaking? You guys muted. I, we can't hear him. Share mm -hmm. Not here. No sound. No Hybrid challenges. Uh, right now. Digital exchange challenges. Right now, I don't see the green line jumping. Maybe we can check. Do you hear me now? I think, I think not. Harding, what did you do? Uh, and this one, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> we can uh, hear you, you, Artyom, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Yanzi, you should go here. <laughs> <I'll speak. laughs> ah, it's the sensing. Too far from sensor. Talk about feedback. Um, yeah. <laughs> right now? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Oh, so perfect. cool, cool. Um, so I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> uh, speak, listen, hear. Cool. Yes, yes. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, <laughs> we're finally trying to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> um, um, I wanna. Looking at uh, all these um, projects, it, it, it reveals uh, like um, this new, uh, these paradigms which uh, this digital world and this GPU world is uh, like showing to us because I, I think I have this, um, I have this thought in mind that uh, we're right now we on a, um, on this big shift between uh, integer calculations and, uh, for example, uh, float point calculations, which means like uh, when we're shifting from CPU to GPU. Um, and I think this affects our aesthetics uh, because when it's like integer, you have these gaps between the, the, the numbers, yeah? And flawed calculations, they're making, making everything more seamless. And I think it's, um, I see this in, in, this, in this works, like how this, tr everything is trying to mix and everything becoming at this point clouds which intersecting with each other and filling uh, the spaces, um, and that's why I, I really and um, I really like this fluid architecture approach uh, by the first team. When um, you know, in this in this world, um, it's not a, you you can shift these realities, yeah, in real time, and this real time it is affecting the architecture. You can like build and like experience. Uh, and I think that a lot of um, um, interesting thoughts uh, we may, like or, or how, how to imagine this, uh, this architecture which, which is like mixed and shifting all the time, yeah, and like it's selling this uh, attention, uh, like when when advertising changed from just one billboard to billboards that can change, yeah, from other time. It's it's actually it's 
it's this play with attention, with these like seconds of attention. Uh, you can sell in internet or buy in internet. Like what what's happening right now with the advertising? Uh, how how many microseconds your your eye was on this logo or um, or in other and. And this affects how you construct this reality also. So it's, it's a back and forth pro um, process. And yeah, I think it's a lot, a lot to explore in these uh, new conditions, I think. And like to go, uh, uh, would like to say thanks to guys that they showing, showing their vi vi visions with us. Maria, you wanted to add something? Yeah, maybe jumping uh, into the Yancy's words regarding the aesthetics. I think it's interesting. Maybe following the betas and the, all the information and the knowledge is shared in between the lines and between the uh, complex networks of interconnection. And I would call it aesthetics. And uh, bringing it to the narrative of the workshop, I think this aesthetical network or the language that you are introducing is very much hybrid and distributed between the physical and digital space that you are designing. And uh, I think this question is very relevant now on the aesthetics and on the language that you are shaping. It's a, um, it's a morphology, it's a uh, visual language, it's a uh, three-dimensional la uh, language. It's the language that you're using for design the spaces. And I think that you're reinventing it is beautiful but again maybe for me as um, maybe a person who has a bit of uh, nostalgia for the analog I every time look to the augmentation as a uh, possibility to come back to the physicality probably and find the reflection of this type of work to the our physical avatars and our physical uh, essence and I think that would be great uh, to discuss maybe even more how do we design the experiences that we are uh, facing maybe today staying here in this hybrid format suffering and seeing everything seeing the networks which are connecting us today through different countries seeing the aesthetics of the zoom screen uh, seeing the way how do we interact how we communicate information how do we co-inhabit the hybrid world, which we are really uh, facing now, thinking who we are right now, because our blood is basically becoming, I don't know, a network which is distributing not only the information which is biological, but also digital. We are fully integrated with the, with the digital information and it's affecting our reality, it's affecting our physicality as well. And how do we create this language the new language that we operate with is absolutely interesting, relevant, and we need to go for it. And that's a great step, I think, that all the groups are doing. And it's a beautiful contribution from all of you. And uh, yeah, looking forward for next steps. Very beautifully put, thank you. Yeah, I guess this uh, digital or analog computing was um, in greatest contestation before World War II. And after that, the von Neumann architecture and the CPU totally took over our world. But maybe another way to think about it is the microphone is the analog computing that didn't really work out so well today. Um, the computer, how we place it, and network of sensor, those are the analog computing. And even to get to the body, there are theorizers who think that um, the DNA is digital computing because it's using like for protein to encode the entire machine of our body. But then at the same time, our brain is actually on analog computing because the synapses that happens in the brain and the growing of the neurons are actually it. But then the problem is that we don't see it anymore because we're so used to von Neumann and we miss that actually we're doing analog every day, but we're just not working it to its full potential. So I think there is a very important conversation there. Okay, let's yeah, try. Yeah, and I wonder too how like this relationship to spirituality and the esoteric, which both the last two teams are exploring, is kind of this like end of the physical body, beginning of the virtual space. Um, but also in, in like traditional esoteric and spiritual practices, there's always a kind of entering into the present through the body and through our senses, you know, like 
Victor is mentioning the reduced reality during a hangover, like when your senses are heightened, you want to reduce that reality. So it's kind of like experiencing through the body a kind of virtual space. And I think there's an interesting conversation there about how um, it seems to be emerging that these spiritual and esoteric interests are also linked to these virtual spaces. So how can we further develop this kind of real-time affect on the architecture or the modification of the narrative in real time based on the feedback in the digital space with physical experience that we have. Um, and where does that leave us in the spiritual space? I think we're all hungry for it, you know, we're hungry for that kind of experience. So there's lots to explore. I'll think about hangover very differently right now, like from now <laughs> on. <laughs> Well, somehow I would say that we are living in the, sorry, the echo again. Uh, somehow we are living in this limited reality. For all of us, we are seeing basically the only surroundings. We don't have a, a full augment, augmented with the, with the whole information that we want reality. But actually, this, in the same time, we are living in the uh, digital world, which is now uh, overwhelmed with the amount of data which is not constructing any information anymore. It's just like we are bombardized with the data, we are bombardized with the information which is thrown to us, but uh, uh, maybe limiting and framing, again, through the certain logic and certain language, this data into the more relevant pieces of information would be a very uh, important point of this project, especially for the digital world. Uh, okay, S thanks for your comments and questions. I think we should go to the next uh, group because we are, have a schedule. <laughs> yes, the next uh, team is, uh, is it real, Alex? And it's uh, Enrique, Manuela, uh, uh, Jaime, and Andrea. Please uh, welcome. El texto lo, lo leo yo, si no. Ah, vale. Eh, what image is in my phone? Pero entonces, ¿dónde la estoy leyendo? Bueno, que se vea la imagen, si no. Eh, hi. Hello, hello. Hi, we are Group 5. Uh, shall I introduce you? Sí. Uh, we are Jaime, Kike, Manuela, and me, Andrea. And first, uh, to begin with, we are going to start with a brief introduction about the concept we are dealing with. Then we, we are watching the video, and just afterwards, we have a presentation to explain the process that we followed to make this, the video. So about the concept, um, uh, on first instance, we make an analysis on the relation that exists with convention and cinema and subject and as an spectator. Image is presented as an object of desire when the screen acts as a, as a bidimensional mirror on, we, on which we can relate, same as Freud pointed out on his psychoanalysis. Existing communication between narration and spectator is simply unidirectional. However, when we talk about contemporary volumetric cinema, the experience becomes immersive, carrying out a continuous exchange of information between the, the image user and the viewer. Video camera has no longer a relevant place since the space is generated as the user advances. Um, the, reflection, the reflection experience mutates into increasingly, into increasingly real simulation, opposite to what Simulacra was considering the art world. For this reason, uh, the project deals with a constant speculation about the levels of reality that are overlaid and the multiple possibilities that the virtual experience might offer us. The video begins with a truthful image recorded, uh, recorded with a camera on which increasingly impassable 3D images are superposed. 
Therefore, the individual is disintegrated into a reflection of multiple identities where his self-perception is fragmented along with the space. And now we shall introduce you the video that we created about this. Para poner full screen, ¿no? The film is the embodiment of the myth of the dreamer. The cinema, the TV, the books, the jokes are all embodiments of the dreamer, the symbolic master of the dream. This is why the film is so often about the power of the dream, the power of the virtual, the power of the real, the power of the illusion that no longer exists, the power of the simulation itself. There are several ways in which stories can be told. It can be observed, it can be moved, it can be heard. It can be thought, it can be lived. This is why the film is so often about the illusion of the power to subvert the simulacrum, to subvert the image as a whole, to subvert all the other simulacra as simulation in the digital sphere. Taking on the cybernetic dimension of storytelling and film. The reason why the 3D film is so effective in conveying the sense of loss experienced by the most experienced, the one who has not yet experienced the other taking place on the cybernetic dimension of storytelling and film. This is what makes the film so potent, the sense of alienation experienced. However, in order to make sense of the power of the digital image, a task is affected, an operation is experienced, a consciousness is formed of the fact that an operation is being simulated, and it becomes increasingly difficult to separate the digital image from the real one. This is what makes the film Cyborg. It is a work of art, a work of fiction, 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 a work of art. Are you referring to the real thing or a dream? I don't remember the real thing. You can't be too worried. You're a very lucky boy. I'm very grateful to you. Is there something on the other side of the screen, Alex? What's that strange reality that we cannot see or touch? I was thinking. I was thinking. I'm not thinking. Right, Alex. This is the essence of virtual reality, the ultimate hallucinatory experience. It is that the most radical form of simulation that does not seek to embody or mirror reality. Narratives are constructed by the actors' reactions to what they see, the camera's ability to sense what they see, and the audience's reaction to what they see. The viewer is an instrument of information exchange, a machine of communication. The instrument of information transformation. The digital is a social media landscape that can be described in myriad terms, but one is struck by the ubiquity of the open source material for making digital reading and writing experiences. The open source material is not monolithic and does not always refer to the established conventions of knowledge-based communication. This is what electronic frontier foundation technology is a creature of the television. The television is no longer the object of fantasy. It is the machine that is that it is an escape route, but it is not afraid to break the rules, and that it is not. The simulation. To disturb the peace. The power of the simulator is the lies in it. The, the power and the real of the simulator lies in it when the boundaries of simulation and of experience are blurred. This is what happens when the boundaries of representation blur, as the digital simulacra of real world interaction blur. As the virtual simulation of real world interaction blur, and the boundaries of simulation blur, become one in a kaleidoscope. This is what happens when the boundaries of simulation blur, as the real world simulation of simulation of conflict, simulation of competition, simulation of power, simulation of surveillance, simulation of invasion, simulation of invasion of another person's space, become one of the world. As a mother, the mother of all women is becomes mother of the digital icon class, mother of all mothers, mother of the digital women, mother of the digital child, mother of the child, mother of the digital universe, mother of the fight for digital equality, mother of the future of the modern politics, mother of the future of women's space, mother of the nightmare of the modern world, mother of the nightmare of the modern world, mother of the nightmare of the modern world, mother of the nightmare of the modern world. Mother of the nightmare of the modern workplace. Mother of the nightmare of the modern world. Not a goddess, but a cyborg. The cyborg myth. The myth of the dreamer. So in order to simulate a real one, one must first have an embodied being. 
Foreign embodied beings of certain set of schemas and relations for determining what constitutes and how should be so that we be free from unnecessary restraints. Thus, a simulated person, a real person, a dream person, all have the power and will to become one. Crazy. <laughs> 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 Okay, I hope you had a very nice trip watching that. Um, so we use different AIs to generate the video. First, we played with this uh, artificial intelligence that uh, makes images from text, and then we use these. We dump these images in the in the video. Um, and but the the main script, the script of the video was all generated also by this by this AI. We made two different ones. Uh, the, there is more like a uh, narrative text, which is where the AI was fed with different uh, philosophic books and also like theory, cinema, cinema theory books. Um, so we were asking questions to this AI, like what's on the other side of the screen? Because at the end, all the video is based on this transition from the two-dimensional to, like, to, the, to the two-dimensional cinema. And then you move to the other side of the screen where it's like 3D and uh, it becomes more immersive and all the layers of data and, and identity are superposed. So the second kind of um, um, script that we did, we fed it with, the, uh, with a clockwork orange uh, movie script. That's why the title Alex, which is, uh, who is the main character of the, of the movie, so there is this conversation that happens at some point in the video. At the beginning, we, were we would have liked for the video to follow a bit more the conversation and the things that are being narrated in the, in the script, but at the end, it just super, it's, it, they, they just um, superpose, and sometimes they resonate, and sometimes they don't. Um, so yeah, you, we also, we, we did this character, this is one of them. Although the main character, which is not shown in this picture, is actually Andrea. Um, because we recorded her first, so we wanted to pretend that, that she was first in the real world, and then she was transitioning to this virtual reality. That's why we had like the real Andrea and like the virtual Andrea. But this is another one of the characters, and we, uh, it's Kika's uh, body, and then we use uh, uh, also an AI uh, face generating software to make the face. Yeah, we are going to show also uh, other um, volumetric personas that we were developing. So at the end, we were struggling on how to uh, generate this narrative, this uh, more or less understandable narrative based on the, what the IA was uh, giving us. And then we started using, like uh, as Manuela said, we started using uh, Andrea as a character, and then the other are parts that are appearing more. Other concept that we were using is the the net, the way we change when we are in the in the inside the internet. So that's the spider with Y spy because it's the concept that we are we were trying to uh, to show how to how yourself is changed when you are dived into this world now and everything is changing. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. The other part of the world was uh, how we approached the 3D spaces. So we started from different points. First of all, we wanted to introduce uh, our own work or our own uh, desired places or references. And then we, we discussed uh, for the scripts about the movies. So we incorporate these other spaces taken from some movies, uh, which uh, the, the jockey full of Barbon that we were calling another name all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's not Don Balo. It's Don Balo, finally. Yeah, but the scene is Jokey Full of Okay, so that's the scene. We were incorporating a scene, so our narrative and our space was not something taken from random or aesthetics, but taken from uh, which are the movies or which are the scenarios that we were imagining. Next. Also, to make reference to the, to the concept that we wanted to deal with, we used uh, the imaginary of um, a contemporary art, uh, art painting, such as René Magritte de Golconda or Francisco de Goya in La Quelarre. Uh, on the first one, uh, we used this painting just like the author to, to reveal the blurry line existing between the individuality and the collective association that we can see here and how the indi individual disaggregates in this virtual world. And then the other one, we used the... Um, uh, just like just like the painting, probably you are not very familiar with the <clears throat> like foreigners are not very familiar with Aquelarre, but this uh, it was a kind of ritual to evoke the the male god, the, like the the evil of the demon, and we are and we also try to present this in in our world to show the the madness and all the ecstasies that uh, were occurring in in the video, and also the multiple possibilities that uh, you can the virtual dimension might offer us. Yeah, um, I wanted to to make a comment on the spatiality works and and how uh, sorry on how the spatiality works and how is it related to the generation of the images. Uh, well, conventionally you would design scenes through a storyboard, which is really a compendium of 2D images. Here in volumetric cinema, it seems that more often than not, you build 3D scenes for then experimenting with them in order to get the images and materials that you're going to use to produce the the work. So in a way, is this the, alone the concept that makes it volumetric, creating architectonic spaces of possibilities for then experimenting and get unexpected but controlled outcomes. Um, is the same with the AI narrative or how the character is developed? The computer builds with our help some field in which we can move to collect its treats. Um, it's very different to navigate and experiment this virtual reality and building the virtual reality field itself. They are kind of separated processes. But although uh, most, in most cases, uh, this process is done in a simultaneous or alternated way, either starting with the space or starting with a particular navigation and interaction. Uh, this is, in a way, the beauty of it. And, but then again, this workflow is not as easy to grasp as you, might, as you might get lost from the beginning in the particularities of it. But for us, it's been really interesting to experiment with these concepts and, and tools. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Crazy. Awesome. So we should move with the last group of today, which I don't know if they are around. It is Lucia, Maria, David, Lucas, and Juan. Are you guys here? They're coming? Great.
share screen, right? Yeah, you should first share screen. Thank you. Oh, is that a Kinect sensor trying to sense the digital me? Yes. <laughs> Um, hello, we are a part of group one. Uh, he is David, he works as a graphic designer and artist, and I'm Lucia, and I'm an architect in progress. <laughs> uh, the idea of our project is mixing, is mixing uh, two worlds. The first one is, um, um, a medieval world with its magic and mystic vibe. And the second one is uh, the real world, which we represent with photogrammetries of Matadero, which is the place uh, we have been coming to attend the, the workshop. In the video, you will see two digital personas. One of them is David, and in the video, he is uh, like praying to medieval gods. And the other one is an avatar made with my body and a face we generated with artificial intelligence. Finally, we wanted to emphasize the idea of, of the connection between these two worlds. So we are using a Kinect camera uh, that allows us to transform the volumetric video with our real-time body movement. So now comes the video. No lo has metido. No, no te preocupes si no compartimos. So that's the video and it reacts to our um, body movement. There is no sound, is this normal? Um, no, it's because uh, we have no sound. So. Ah, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, sorry. So that's the video and it reacts uh, with our body movement. Uh, we are putting the hand in front of the Kinect camera. Ah, it's a real time performance. Yep. Oh. do more perform performative thing. <laughs> Can we 
turn on the light. So it's like the sensor is not working without the light. Great. Uh, I think uh, we can discuss. We can talk for a bit. Okay. So that. Well, let's see. Yes. That. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Very, Very neat and precise. Okay, we can move to the final review, the last two group. Uh, I'm gonna try uh, the last time to try with the other microphone to check if the the works. But um, so let me know, okay? We love experiment. Awesome. Do you hear me? Remotely. Do you, do you hear me, Pro? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so now it seems working. Good. We have two mics. Okay, so whenever you want. Pro Eli, Maria, Victor, Hadin, Deborah. No, no, no. Well, maybe I'll just start. Um, I just want to congratulate the first team with for the narrative arc. I think you guys did a really good job. Oh, maybe you can mute so I don't hear myself. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think you did a really awesome job um, kind of creating this narrative from the real to like the gradually more reconstructed and simulated to this almost schizophrenic um, experience. And I think it, you did it really well both in time and in space, um, also especially with the sound. And I think it's, it's kind of making me think a lot about also maybe a, a comment that Victor mentioned in the chat of this like desire to enter this environment physically. Like it seems like a lot of the projects are attempting to um, kind of break the veil between um, the virtual and the physical. And especially with the last project with the Kinect, you're literally using your hand or your physical body to break into it. So there's something there's something there, I think, about trying to um, figure out, and we're all trying to figure out how to exp experience these things with our bodies um, and, and have a real, um, maybe more impactful first person um, impact from them. So I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what, where to leave that, but I just think that it's interesting we're all trying to figure that out collectively together. Oh, and it also reminded me of the first group, sorry, um, of the first group's project where they were, um, which I thought worked really well, the first, very first group that presented with the 3D model of the phone that they were trying to touch in augmented reality, this kind of attempt to pierce the veil, but an, an inability to. Um, I thought that was done really successfully too. That's for me, first impression. Yeah, I really like your comment because when I was watching the first video, um, at the end of it, I start watching myself, oh, wow, how did we end up here from that normal shooting in, in, in the street to this completely distorted uh, digital geometry fucked up? And I think it's nice the way there is this transition because it makes us think uh, in a, some kind of a gradient from digital to, to analog, uh, which is exactly what we are living now. We start, usually we think on this very clear division between both, but you know, like right now we are experiencing this, this hybrid situation. And regarding the second video, if you are, it's, it's a funny thing you did because you are working with the idea of digital personas and you use a camera that most of the time is used to look at faces, but you look at the hands. It made me think what would happen if you use your face as the filter between multiple images as you were doing with your hands.
I don't know if you guys want to reply or can I jump in? Yes, please. Yeah, maybe, uh, well, again, I want to congrats for these two groups for amazing work. Um, despite all the problems that we have today with the connection, I really enjoyed all the projects. It's mind blowing for me, especially when you just run your videos and we kind of like submerged there. And it, it's real trip that you are creating. And uh, that's just fascinating. Uh, thank you very much to everybody for the work. And I was thinking that um, every time before you start the presentations, you're introducing yourself and it's very great to hear that you're coming from a, such a different backgrounds and you are bringing to this work absolutely different expertise. As well as I'm curious, what are you looking for in this workshop and what are you bringing back to your professional field and how does it reflect on you personally because I think really this mind-blowing work should be reflected in your uh, daily culture in your uh, daily work routine as well or studies no? and uh, like and basically the question that you are all bringing on the new perception of the information on the new understanding of a dynamic space on the new complexity of a data, on the new complexity of a hybrid space. You are like bringing us through the flat, to the truly immersive three-dimensional trips with your techniques. Now, and while well, the team is calling this volumetric, right? And I think that's absolutely relevant uh, for all of you looking back to the architecture design, um, I think that some of you are saying that you're a fashion designer, some of others are, develop, uh, are developing some software. No, so basically, I would really in encourage you to affect your future steps uh, through the work that you have been doing now and uh, bringing this cutting edge design innovation into your field. So maybe these are some generic words that I do have, and this of course relates not only to some of the projects, but into some generic fields. And yeah, maybe I just want to sum up and congrats everybody and thanks for the work. Yeah, we're so individualized, we need generic words. Um, yeah, we can't hear you. Can't hear. Um, I wanted to say that this last two um, uh, mind-blowing works as all works, like all various works was also mind-blowing. But this one in particular, I think they were m working more with cinematic language. Like first group was literally, they, they w was working with this, uh, like cinematic heritage because they have this uh, volumetric reconstructed frames inside their uh, like 3D universe and on the back of this universe is like 2D movie happening and on top of this another layer of uh, like real life and I like this sandwich. <laughs> um, and the other group uh, I think it's also Interesting how they working with this like montage cut, but it's not like in After Effects you making a mask because it's working in real time, and uh, it's it's also different experience. And what you um, uh, because when when you as like yourself trying to interact somehow with the Kinect is making this uh, like feedback loop in your brain that that. It's something different than just watching these two videos, even with the alpha mask. Uh, but it's this alpha mask is connected to your body, and this is also makes this like mutant or cyborg kind of thing. Um, and what is uh, what it reminds me is uh, like 4D 4D games. Maybe some of you know. Uh, because there, we um, working with these 3D graphics, yeah, uh, X, Y, Z coordinate, and there is next level stuff. We're not gonna teach this uh, for 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 the near time, but uh, there is four dimension. Um, 
and how to interact with these four dimensions is really interesting because it's it's uh, making the slices of reality um, but these slices are, each slice is 3 3d you know and if you like move this slicer you see another uh, cuts of your uh, 4D world into 3D representation on the 2D flat screen of your laptop. So you can check this uh, this game. It's like Mega Cure. Um, it's it's I don't know if I pronounce this correctly. Mega Cure. M I E G A K U R E. Um, and see see how how this works and how like how it can expand your uh, your volumetric vision even more than to four, four dimension. Because, uh, I mean, you can cut the reality with the volume of your, of your body, with, you, with the volume of your hand, and, um, and yeah, it it's adds to this bunch of techniques that you can, um, that you can use after this workshop like to tell your stories and to tell other stories that couldn't be tell before or something. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, Maria has to leave, so um, let's say goodbye to her. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Amazing work. Thank Congrats. You, Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, yep. we can. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I just wanted to say, regarding the, um, the last team's work, I thought it was really interesting thinking about the idea of affordances and basic forms of interaction that we've gotten used to design with um, in our physical world and how that physical world kind of communicates to us what can and can't be done. But when we're talking about volumetric digital space or virtual space, there's the opportunity for rethinking all these different forms of interactions. Um, and I think those earlier conversations about kind of bridging the real and that space probably starts to formulate around its user interface um, and the way that that's interpreted or communicated. So I thought the, the second team's exploration into that was really quite nice. Um, for the first team, I thought there was something really interesting that tied back also to the first first team, which was the kind of shift in perspectives, um, going from the first person to that second person, and then sometimes even splitting from the, se the second person, like you're following the same person twice. Um, so it, it starts to just raise really interesting questions about perspective or whose point of view are you watching from and what are the implications. So I thought both teams did a, did a really lovely work and of course, um, lovely work all around uh, and of course, this is just the beginning, so um, I suppose they're all expected to continue working after this. So that so it's just some encouragement. Um, but yeah, really lovely work. Yeah. I, I I agree with everything. I have to say that in these last two teams, it has been the hardest ones for like the easiest ones to to interact with, like to somehow feel inside. But the most difficult ones to comment on because I was so into it in, in the first case that I was like, this is a trip. Uh, it's extremely difficult for me to somehow to, to comment on. Um, what I will say is that um, the use of these tools allow for avoiding generalization. And I think that this could be like something extremely interesting to, to develop further on how the different people interacting with it has the possibility to somehow start to personalize or start to. Um, generate preci precision in a little bit in the in the system th that you guys are like implementing on and this this kind of interactiveness or, or is, is something that the second team was kind of bringing into like with the with the physical one like trying to interact with and but at the same time i was feeling that at some point i was like kind of um, somehow um, like the magnificent of the system was not even allowing me to, to make the comments. But I, I just want to say that the, I think that the technical development that they have achieved in two weeks is extremely impressive. I say because at some point in there are similarities in some things that we probably feel quite, uh, 
quite familiar with, but the, the level of the technicality that they have reached is like just really impressive. And we say it from a place where like we, we are doing with the students certain things that are not the same, but quite complex as well in one year program. And here it has been quite, quite impressive. So for that, congratulations to, to you guys because it has been really good. Yeah, uh, I also want to jump. Uh. Uh, I also want to say uh, that uh, uh, the sound in the first uh, group's uh, movie was amazing. I think, like, uh, for me, uh, from the visual perspective, the uh, video was, like, uh, a little bit uh, too intensive. Uh, so sometimes I couldn't follow what's going on. But uh, the sound was uh, the thing that uh, was keeping my attention on it. So it's like... Uh, uh, people already said that uh, they had uh, this uh, feeling of the trip, uh, and I think uh, the sound was uh, the thing that uh, made the, this trip uh, possible. So uh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, also a nice way how you can um, support the story, support the visual uh, narrative with uh, some sound, cool sound. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, feedback loop. Oh my God. Yeah, cool. Thank you, everybody. I mean, it. We, we're so our team is so blessed to be able to um, teach this workshop here with the amazing input. I can assure you that all of these original, unique, and crazy ideas are solely the effort of the students and they're so brilliant i really have no words for it uh, like for instance when um, i was just like putting the projects in order for the presentation today i had no idea because i was just matchmaking between more similar themes right i had no idea that we would start in reality and then into the digital and come back to a loop where you have the interaction between digital and physical and I think even for us as tutor, it was really a trip um, that the student have brought upon us today and we really would like to thank you. Yeah, and also because of the energy that you guys gave us, it uh, reminds us of a lot of ideas that we had to abandon um, since the beginning of um, current in 2019, like the 40 games that um, Yancy was talking about where you can project high dimension in two ways. One way is to look at projections or look at shadows of high dimension geometry. The other way is to slice through high dimension geometry. And that was a way to compress information within a lower dimension. Like that was something that we had to give up. We were working so much with hypercubes and stuff. And yeah, and like for instance, um, the last team who worked with um, the Kinect, all they were talking with us was like hot pock and cabbages. You know, we had so much fun in the conversation. And then they came in without a single word showing this amazing project and left without a single word. But it was like such a great presentation that I really would like to congratulate you. Yeah, and for all of the other teams as well, it's just crazy. So thank you so much. Yeah, I wanna thank you too. It's been so inspiring seeing all of you. Um, and keep it up and we're so excited to see what you do in the future. I think that this is a really great starting point and so much to explore, so many great questions that you've asked and hopefully we can keep doing it all together in this interconnected hybrid way. Yay. Yay. Beer. Three hours later, <laughs> you deserve a beer break. <laughs> yes. Well, so I, I think, uh... Uh, it's time to wrap up uh, the, today's session, today's presentation. I really want to uh, thank all the students for their amazing job. It's like I didn't expect so much in such a short period, and you did much more than we teach you. <laughs> so it's like really crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I also want to thank uh, uh, all the Media Lab guys for. Uh, arranging this uh, event and it, it was really comfortable to work with you and uh, I just I want to come here again <laughs> I think because it was so much fun yeah uh, Yancy, do you want to add something dope <laughs> that was dope uh, and yeah it was hi higher the Hired 
I don't know, higher than I expected. So it's it's. Uh, I think it's uh, breaking this uh, um, these constraints, like of um, th this process is it's it's re it's really hard. That's why it's. Uh, um, that's why I said that we showing that the result of the process. Yeah, it's not the result result, and. I already see that each of these projects have like uh, have the continuation for for sure. So it's totally possible to make something like next level crazy, but to not to get to um, to not to get I don't know insane. It's better to to keep this level for now, and then after you will sleep today or tomorrow if you gonna party and celebrate <laughs> uh, so you can like understand how your how your brain actually is working different right now and yeah I hope this this will happen to you and you never be the same again <laughs> thank you guys that was incredible thank you for blowing your mind guys. Yeah. Thank you to Eduardo, Elena, Danny, and um, Sonia. And also thank you to all of the amazing guests. Um, yeah, Victor, Deborah, Haddon, Maria, and George. Thank you, and hopefully see you in real life soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a great Saturday, now we can stop recording <laughs> and start <Yeah>. drinking. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Arten, Yancy, Eli, Pro. I'm sure we will find uh, a moment in the future, hopefully not Ibred, all here in Madrid. Um, so thank you so much in yeah, name of, so. of the whole crew of, of Media Lab, having amazing to, you know, to experience all, all this workshop through the last two weeks with, with you guys. Um, so in our name, thank you so much. Um, mostly thanks to all the people that have joined us. Um, is I mean we, we mentioned with the with with Karen that we were super amazed of of the level and the implication of, of every person that have been involved in the in the group. So thank you, thank you so much. I mean we couldn't do this kind of stuff without without you and without people like you. So most of all, thank you. And to say, I have to say that uh, when we finish, we are wrapping up, uh, but uh, please remain here a bit uh, because we are going to introduce you uh, some working groups that have been, you know, works in Media Lab and are, they are d dealing with topics related to volumetric cinema that they want to explain you what they do. Because one of our intentions here in Media Lab is that, uh, you know, this is not an enclosure of volumetric cinema. We want to keep exploring this, this stuff and to do that, we need you. So we are an open space and we are willing to receive any proposal that you have, you may have, to develop different projects or if you want to keep continuing working with the volumetric cinema and produce different pieces. We are all ears to listen to your projects. So, and also, again, with the current team, uh, you know we have a discourse, so that's going on. And hopefully we will remain connected through there. Um, finally, the, the guests, uh, the ones that remain here and also the ones that uh, left us, uh, well, Thank you so much, and it be, it's been a pleasure. Hope uh, we cross path again very, very uh, soon. Thank you. Can we all take a selfie together? Is oh, it yeah. very <laughs> Please. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. See you soon. No, no selfie. Recording stopped. <laughs> Well, somebody has to take it in the room. Well, uh, okay. Ah. Vale, para los que estáis aquí, os voy a pasar un segundo. Oh my God! Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for the hard work. Voy a pasar un segundo la palabra a Álvaro y Laura era, ¿no? que son de CREAXR. CREAXR es un grupo de trabajo que ya está vinculado a Media Lab, que han estado, bueno, los conocéis porque han sido compañeros vuestros de, del taller y os quiero encontrar una, una cosita muy rápido.
Si quieres, conecta, sí, sí, ningún problema. I don't think it's a selfie. Okay. <laughs> They're getting into business. Bueno, primero a todos los compañeros del taller, enhorabuena por el chavo. Pando las cosas súper guapas que habéis hecho, de verdad. Y luego por ahí algunos grupos, ¡ay, no me da tiempo! Ay, no, no llego, no voy a hacer no sé qué. Todos los resultados han sido impresionantes. Bueno, en fin. Nada, sin más, quería comentaros que, bueno, presentaros a mi compañera Laura. A mí ya me conocéis, pero habéis visto por aquí. Eh, los dos somos eh, bueno, dinamizadores y cofundadores de una sociedad, de, de una comunidad eh, que vive en Discord que se llama CreaXR. Crea. Eh, nació como un grupo de, eh, de exalumnos de, de, una, de un curso de realidad virtual y luego se ha ido convirtiendo en otra cosa que, que os explicará Laura. Pero sin más, queríamos invitaros a todos. Eh, a uniros a la comunidad porque hemos habilitado un canal dentro de, la, de esta comunidad para mantener el contacto, de vídeo volumétrico, para mantener el contacto entre nosotros, los que queráis uniros, eh, seguir estando juntos en contacto de alguna manera, eh, compartiendo cosas y compartiendo conocimiento y aunque Medialab también va a habilitar eh, un espacio y un Discord, las dos comunidades van a estar eh, vinculadas. O sea, va a haber un puente entre, va a haber un canal de Medialab dentro de CREA y dentro de CREA y dentro de Media Lab va a haber un canal de, de CREA para que haya una transferencia de conocimientos y estar conectados. Y sin más, o sea, os hemos habilitado un canal para los que queráis participar y eh, seguir el contacto. Os estáis invitadísimos a, para entrar en la comunidad. Os voy a dejar ahora un QR enorme y, por supuesto, se pasará el link por, eh, por el grupo que ya hay de Discord. Y sin más, os dejo que os hable un poco de CREA a Laura, que para que sepáis un poco de qué va la historia o cómo ha evolucionado. <risa> Nada, muy rápido. Eh, bueno, somos CreaXR, somos creadores de realidad extendida y bueno, pues tenemos ese Discord donde compartimos recursos, información, nos ayudamos unos a otros y bueno, hacemos charlas, eh, bueno, eh, han, han surgido también grupos de trabajo, entonces, eh, bueno, pues eh, encantados de que, de que os unáis para allá. Eh, ¿Qué tipo de perfiles hay? Eh, de todo tipo, o sea, realmente lo que buscamos es una comunidad de gente interesada en crear experiencias, en... Eh, bueno, pues eh, orientadas a realidad virtual, aumentada o mixta y, y bueno, pues eh, compartir, compartir conocimiento y, y ayudarnos. Y poquito más, no sé qué más comentar. Eh. No, eso, sin más, que nació como una comunidad muy centrada en la realidad virtual y en la realidad aumentada, pero bueno, tenemos todo, hay todo tipo de perfiles y hay perfiles de, hay developers, pero hay, hay artistas, hay gente interesada en, en el, sin más, en las realidades inmersivas, sin más, que solo quiere aprender. Y que siempre hemos intentado mantener una, un foco muy maker, de que sea un foro donde encontrarnos gentes diferentes, con intereses comunes, eh, para sí, hacer sinergias para sacar proyectos adelante. Y ahí han salido proyectos de muy diferentes, o sea, se han sacado cosas adelante. Entonces, sin más, que tengáis el vacón que tengáis, estáis invitados. Y sin más, pues, tenemos un sitio donde seguir en contacto y, y generando ideas locas, las que haga falta, y compartir conocimiento. Nada más, muchas gracias. Bueno, pues cerramos ya. Muchas gracias por, por venir. Seguimos en el Discord, seguimos en contacto, nos vemos, estamos abiertos y seguimos trabajando. ¿vale? Muchísimas gracias, chicas, a todas.